All right, so now that you know how to use a loop uh, for various things, like we've done a square, here's an example, turn the motors on, go straight. Um, all right, so now that you know how to use a loop for uh, repeating a program, like uh, our example of the square here, where we turn the motors on for two rotations to go straight, and then we turn the motors on to turn, and then we used our gyro sensor to check this angle of turn, and once it got to be 90, then we would um, stop the motors and repeat that over and over again, right? We did the same thing recently with our stop at black line to get it to go back and forth from one black line to another. So now we're going to expand that knowledge. We're going to use a loop, but instead of a wait block here, which will sometimes freeze up your program uh, as it's waiting for one thing to happen, if you're trying to watch more than one thing, we want to use something called a switch. So let's take a look at how that might work. So if we come over here, we're going to go to our flow blocks and we're going to put our loop up there to start with, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these switches. So a switch is pretty cool. All right, now our switch has either a true or a false for whatever we set in here. So for example, we could set this up so that our color sensor is measuring the reflected light intensity and when it sees dark which is uh, let's say that's less than 20 in this case it depends on the mat again and how your light sensor is mounted but uh, once you figure out what that number is you put that in so whenever it sees a dark area it's going to do one of two things. If this is true, that it is dark, it's going to do this check, this upper part. If this is false, it's going to do the lower part. And then it'll come down and repeat and check the sensor again. So we can kind of get it to do two things, be looking at uh, multiple things at one time. So if it is less than that, that's when we want it to stop. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to put in my brick for it to stop. And then I want it to do a turn around. So I'm going to put my tank block in there and I'm just going to have it do a spin turn of negative 30 and positive 30. And I'm not sure how many rotations that takes. I could put in here, get fancier and put in a gyro sensor, uh, or I could just know what those uh, rotations are. Either way, it depends on how accurate you're wanting to be with your program. So let's just say one rotation will turn it around. So that's what it's going to do when it sees a black one. This condition right here is true. It looks at the light sensor and it says it is less than 20. That's dark. It's going to stop and turn around. What if the light sensor is not less than 20? So that's all the rest of the time when it's seeing the white line or any other color that's brighter than 20. That's when we want it just to drive forward. So I'm going to put a tank block in there and I'm going to tell it just to turn the motors on. And so it'll turn those motors on and just drive at 50. So as long as this is not true, that's the X means not true, the check means yes it is true, it's going to just loop around here. It's going to check and say is it still less than or is it still more than 20? Yep, leave the motors on. Leave the motors on. As soon as it comes over here and says it's dark, it's going to say whoops, stop, turn around, and then it's going to come back and it's going to check those light sensors again. So it's very similar to what you did over here where you put in a weight block. The difference is it can just continue on and uh, we'll be able to add more things to those switches here as you'll see uh, momentarily. So let's start with this. Just repeat your loop block uh, and use a switch this time instead of a weight block. See if you can get it to do the same thing. 